We can discuss this further with Lawrence Douglas, who is a professor of law at Amherst College in Massachusetts and author of Will He Go? Trump and the Looming Election Meltdown, which was in fact written before November's election. And in fact, Professor Douglas, you predicted back in the summer of last year that there would be an issue with the transition of power, but your focus was more on the on the delay in the result because of the mail-in ballots. Did you ever, ever predict the kind of scenes that we saw yesterday on Capitol Hill? Well, I mean, I have a pretty catastrophic imagination, but I have to say, uh, even my imagination has its limits. So whereas, you know, I certainly feared that Trump would never concede, and I certainly feared that that refusal uh, to concede could result in violence on the streets of America, I never imagined that the violence would take place in the halls of the Capitol itself. And can you imagine, will President Trump eventually concede? Is there any, what, what's your thinking in the next uh, few days before the inauguration on the 20th? What do you assume will happen? Well, again, when I think of concession, I think concession as an act in which you recognize the legitimacy of your opponent's victory. Uh, that is that you actually lost fairly and squarely. I do not imagine Donald Trump will ever do that. He will not do that between now and January 20th, and he won't do that in any moment in the future. Uh, I do believe that he will leave the White House come January 20th, uh, but I don't think there really has been any doubt about that. I think the concerns that we've all had is the kind of damage that he can do to American democracy um, in the period uh, from the election until January 20th. And we've already seen the very substantial damage that he has done. And now the worries are about the damage he could do in the, let's say, two weeks or so remaining in his tenure in the White House. Well, yesterday's events aside, there are still an awful lot of people who do believe what the president is saying, that the election was flawed. There's, of course, no uh, evidence of that. How damaging is that for the democracy of the United States going forward? It's incredibly damaging. I mean, you really can't have a, a democracy in which the people doubt the uh, integrity of the electoral process. I mean, if the people really, if the Trump supporters actually believe that the election has been stolen from him through a corrupt and rigged process, then they see their acts as acts of protecting the democracy rather than acts of insurrection and sedition, which is what they are. And they're receiving that message directly from uh, the president himself. And of course, we need to bear in mind, it's not simply the president who's been communicating that message. I mean, we very regretfully saw that more than 100 uh, lawmakers in the GOP, congressional lawmakers, were still willing to um, reject uh, Biden's election last night uh, in Congress. What does the Republican Party need to do to get a lid on this, to, to rein this back? Well, I, you know, I'm not sure that the Republican Party is capable of uh, putting a lid on it. I mean, we've seen, uh, and again, I think it's very important that at least belatedly, uh, we saw Mitch McConnell and Lindsey Graham, uh, you know, step forward and say enough is enough. But on the other hand, uh, these are senators who basically have fed and nurtured the beast uh, for the last four years. That said, I do think it is important that they made that very emphatic statement uh, yesterday. On the other hand, there remain uh, many, many Republican lawmakers who uh, continue to uh, support the president. And, you know, is it possible that if the president has gone a, a step too far, that that support will now start to uh, peel away? Because I do think it has a lot, a lot to do with uh, cowardice and opportunism than it has to do with any kind of actual uh, bona fide ideological agreement with the president. But that all remains to be seen. We saw the one of the president's sons describing the Republican Party as the president's party, that it's it's no longer a party. Uh, it, it's basically a character, one person led party. What happens in 2024? Will he run again? What's your look into your crystal ball for us once again? Well, again, I think it, a lot of it has to do with the amount of damage that he, uh, the self-inflicted damage of, uh, of yesterday. And, uh, you know, what's been incredible is this is a guy who has demonstrated his unfitness for office uh, early and often. And uh, it really takes a kind of spectacular uh, display uh, verging on a putsch. Uh, to really kind of perhaps uh, vex the American people into realizing, oh my God, this is a really, truly dangerous person. 
On the other hand, if you look at some of the commentators of Fox News who have been Trump's um, you know, most uh, loyalist enablers over the last years, even last night we saw the uh, excuses starting to be uh, uh, marshaled forward. We heard people like Sean Hannity, a very uh, influential uh, Fox uh, commentator, say, well, you know, what happened in uh, the Capitol is not dissimilar to what happened with the Black, Black Lives Matter protesters. So again, there's this attempt to uh, excuse away this incredibly deplorable scenes. And we'll see whether um, the deplorability of what we saw yesterday will really kind of stick or whether it's going to be argued away by the uh, people who have enabled Trump over these past years. It's been tried before, it had failed, but should, do you think, President Trump be impeached? Well, again, we only have two weeks for it to happen. Uh, you know, I think on one level, the should is, yes, I think in an ideal world, uh, he should be removed from office because he has committed offenses against the Constitution of the United States. That said, I think uh, he really should only be uh, removed from office if there is a dark bipartisan agreement to do so. Because the last thing I would like to see happen is for the impeachment uh, process to suddenly be used as a tool for his uh, rehabilitation. Um, and, uh, and as people cast him as a martyr of uh, democratic vengeance, which is certainly not the case. It is most emphatically the case that he does not deserve to remain in office. But uh, the perception of the legitimacy of the removal process will depend on the support of um, congressional Republicans. Professor Lawrence Douglas, fascinating to speak to you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. My pleasure.